Hello. So here we are going to build a, a bill of materials. We're going to build some item where we have the information of how many we need of product A and some additional information. So first step should be to build our MRP table according to how many items we have under part A here. So in this case, we have three unique items, B, C, and D, which means we will need three B, C, and D slots here to fill in our inventory requirements. Next part is to kind of transform this table information here about how much inventory we start with for certain items and the ordering requirements over into our table. So let's start with part B. We have lot follow rule, three weeks lead time, no receipts and no beginning inventory. So lot for lot and the lead time is three weeks. C, we have lot for lot, one week, none and zero. Lot for lot and one week lead time. And item D, fixed order quantity of 2,000, one week lead time, 2,000 scheduled receipts in week one and a beginning inventory of 200. Fixed order quantity of 2,000 lead time is one week. We have 2,000 coming in and we have 200 inventory to start with. And now we can actually start filling in our production table. So the question is how many of part A do we need when? We read the question here, it says in the master production schedule for product A, 500 units are needed in week six. This means, and this is kind of something that you just write over the table as like a little side note, we need 500 of part A here in week six. They need to be ready then. So let's start filling things in. The first thing you should start with is part B here because it has only appears once in there and it goes directly to A. We need two Bs for every A that we make. So if we need 500 in week six, well, that means that we need 1,000 Bs in week six. Since we have no inventory to start with, our inventory is gonna stay at zero all the way through. And now in week six, well, we have no inventory, but we need 1,000 units, which means that we need to have a order arrive that week for 1,000 units. And we can directly have 1,000 units because the lot sizing rules lot for lot, which means you can order as many or as few units as you want. And we can order 500, 600, 550, whatever you want. In this case, we can directly order the 1,000 that we need. So if we have 1,000 coming in that week and we use 1,000, so our inventory will stay at zero. Now, if we want to have that coming in that week, when do we need to place that order? Well, we need to place that order three weeks in advance. So one, two, three, and one down here. 1,000 units in week three need to be ordered. The order needs to be released in week three to, for, in order for it to arrive in week six. Moving on, the next item that we can do where we have all the parents is C for here and C for here. We can't do D yet because we don't know how many C's we order when to make this D here. So we go with C next. So we know we need one C for every A and one C for every B. Well, we need 500 A's in week six, which means we need 500 C's in week six. And we order 1,000 B's in week three, which means we need 1,000 C's in week three. Again, no inventory, no receipts, our lot for lot rule is also applicable for item C, which means we can have a order of 1,000 units coming in that week, leaving our inventory at zero. And in week six, we can have a order of 500 coming in. With a lead time of one week, we just need to order this item one week in advance. So in order for it to arrive in week three, we need to order in week two. For order it to arrive in week six, we need to order it in week 
item D. And now we have all the parents for D. We have this C covered, we have A, and we have this C here. So what do we need? How many Ds do we need? We need one D for every A, and we need two Ds for every C. Okay, so one D for every A, which means again, we need 500 here, because we have 500 A's from that week. And we need two Ds for every C. So if we order 500 in week five, we need actually 1,000 Ds in that week. And if we order 1,000 Cs in week two, we need to order or have available 2,000 Ds that week. Okay, so, and this time I actually have some starting inventory and some scheduled receipts. If our unmanned inventory in week zero is 200 and we have 2,000 units coming in, brings our inventory up to 2,200. We then use 2,000, which brings our inventory down to 200, at which point it will stay there because we're not using anything of it. And now, here, we only have 200 units in inventory, but we need 1,000. So, in a lot for lot rule, we would just order 800 to have that quantity available. But our ordering rule is fixed order quantity 2,000. That means we can order only multiples of 2,000, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, and so on. So, the minimum thing that we can order here is 2,000 units. Well, that brings our inventory then in that week up to 2200 minus the 1000 that we actually use leaves our inventory at 1200 for the week. Next week we use 500 more brings our inventory down to 700. The lead time of one week means we have to send off that order and week four. And that is the finished production schedule for this item here. In order to have 500 units in week six, i.e. here, we need to order B, C, and D according to this schedule.